2024 through 2025's winter was insane. Being the third coldest January in United States history to bringing the first blizzard warnings on the Gulf Coast ever, it's almost undeniable looking at it from any perspective that that winter was a historic one that won't be forgotten for a very long time. And in August of last year, I made a forecast in preparations for this extreme winter, which I did okay on. Overall, there were a few things I could have done better. For example, my Gulf Coast forecast, where I expected much less snow to occur, did not come to fruition whatsoever. So this is my redemption chance. In this video, we're going to be discussing in 2025 through 2026's winter whether you can expect to see above average snow, below average snow, warmer than normal, or cooler than normal conditions across your area in the United States in hopes that we can do a little bit better this time around. But before we do, make sure to click that like and subscribe button down below as it helps me out a lot, and let's get right into the video. Now we're going to start off this forecast just how we would start off any other by taking a look at the forecasted Enzo phase for this winter. If you're not familiar, the term Enzo stands for El Nino Southern Oscillation and basically refers to the sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific as they can have a huge impact on our temperatures, the jet stream pattern, and more that we see here in the United States. So it's very important to get a scope of what the El Nino Southern Oscillation is going to be looking like in terms of temperature. This year we're expecting what's called a La Nina to develop over the next couple of months, which basically is whenever those temperatures in the eastern Pacific are well below average. Uh, you've got the contrast which would be an El Nino, and that's whenever you're seeing those uh, eastern Pacific temperatures reaching highly above average. But again, this year we're expecting the former, the La Nina pattern to develop. And this has been a relatively recent development on the Enzo forecasting website, iri.columbia.edu. Uh, we're expecting this La Nina to peak in intensity sometime kind of late fall, but it is expected to last into the early winter, and that is a forecast put out by the Climate Prediction Center themselves. Now, what do the models think of this? Well, our long-range models are telling us that, hey, maybe we're going to stick with a neutral phase. Now, if something like this were to happen, we'd be able to expect a winter very similar to what we typically see without too many variations on snow patterns and such. Now, I will note, I don't usually trust these model-based probabilities as much as we do the actual CPC forecast, and we're going to talk about why in a little bit. But it is worth noting, even the model-based probabilities do have a potential La Nina rising up as we go into the late fall and back into the early winter, like we mentioned earlier. So, it's pretty interesting. Now, what the heck did things look like at this time last year on this website? Well, again, <clears throat> this is what things look like this year. And this is what they looked like last year. As you can see, incredibly similar. We were forecasting for a weak La Nina to develop according to the CPC Enzo probabilities across much of the fall and winter time. Now, it is worth noting that this La Nina actually developed quite a bit later than we were expecting and didn't really come full into play until about January, even though it was forecasted to peak all the way back in December. But even the model probability showed a weak La Nina at this time for the August 2024 through 2025 winter forecast. So there was a bit of a stronger signal for a La Nina last year, and we still only ended up saying quite a weak one, and that is because we were transitioning from one of the strongest El Nino phases that this nation has seen since we've started recording these Enzo phases. So overall, we ended up seeing a weak La Nina develop throughout most of winter 2024 through 2025 with a neutral phase at times, specifically during the beginning portions of the winter. Now, what winter storms did we see whilst that weak La Nina was in play that were major in 2024 through 2025's winter season? Well, we had the infamous 2025 Gulf Coast Blizzard. This is also known as Winter Storm Enzo. This was the first event to bring blizzard warnings and blizzard-like conditions to the Gulf Coast. We saw over a foot of snow accumulation in Florida, over 13 inches in Louisiana, even a quarter ice accumulation in Hebronville, Texas, a 939 millibar low pressure system storm. This was an incredibly incredibly unanalogous event and what I mean by that is this has never happened before. This is the first time that we ever saw a winter storm get this extreme this far south. This was the first time that we saw blizzard warnings go off on the Gulf Coast. This is the first time that we had over a foot of snow in freaking Florida. And what else did we see in the 2024 through 2025 winter that was somewhat major? That's right, it was good old winter storm Blair. Now, 
Winter Storm Blair was pretty interesting. It was last year's closest thing to what we'd expect a normal blizzard to look like in the United States. We had this beautiful satellite imagery of the blizzard as it was over the northern plains as well as portions of the southern plains and central plains. If we take a look at the category here, you'll notice that it's uh, categorized as a quote-unquote minor blizzard, and that is because the snow accumulations reached over 20 inches, uh, pushing that regional snowfall index up to over 3. Again, that 20-inch snow accumulation occurred near Chapman, Kansas. We had nearly an inch of ice accumulation in portions of Virginia, D.C., Maryland, in surrounding areas. Uh, this blizzard also spawned a significant tornado outbreak through much of Dixie Alley. Very intense event overall, and again, kind of your classic wintertime uh, blizzard that you'd see about once per year. And again, this was whilst we had that weak La Nina in play last year. Okay, so now we looked at last year, and we've seen what a weak La Nina typically ends up bringing us in terms of winter conditions. What did last year to last year look like? And by that, I mean 2023 to 2024's winter season. This was a very interesting winter. We had a incredible El Nino of historic proportions. Again, this was arguably one of the strongest El Ninos of all time. Uh, this was one of the longer-lasting El Ninos that we've seen in quite a while, and it was devastating for many reasons. It led to significant tornado outbreaks through much of summer 2023. Even the spring 2023 tornado season was impacted by this strong El Nino, but there was something else noteworthy that this El Nino brought. The least impressive winter in a decade. This was the most intense winter storm that we ended up seeing during the 2023 through 2024 winter storm season, and this is typically referred to as winter storm thin. The maximum snowfall accumulation that we ended up seeing ended up being in Wolf Creek Pass, which is actually all the way up into Canada. We ended up seeing multiple strong to violent tornadoes occur with this large storm complex. The strongest tornado being a tornado that ended up impacting the town of Panama City. Uh, there was also another EF3 tornado as well back there into portions of Georgia. Again, an extreme tornado outbreak associated with this system, but the winter storm wasn't necessarily all that significant for the United States. Yes, yeah, so I got a haircut mid-video, don't worry about it. But now that we know what a typical La Nina winter looks like in the United States and what an El Nino winter looks like in the United States, it's time for us to devise our 2024 through 2025 winter season forecast with the knowledge that we're going into this being we're setting up for a La Nina. I want to make this entirely clear. Is a La Nina guaranteed to happen? Is a 100% chance? No. Are there other factors that play into the 2024-2025 winter season? Absolutely. The only thing that I would know is PNA plays a big role. You also got, again, these little intricate things that can't be forecasted, you know, four or five months out, like specific patterns in the jet stream and whatnot. Anybody that tells you they know exactly what's going to happen this winter is a liar. There's a reason that my forecast was so terrible last year, and that is because we genuinely don't know too much about the winter season this far out. But we're going to give it our best shot, so work with me here and enjoy the forecast. So here we are on the beautiful 2024 through 2025 winter season forecast map. I understand that my drawing wasn't the best this time around, but you're going to have to give me a break because I spent pretty long thinking about this and what I wanted to do here. So we're going to start off by filling in the southeast quadrant of the United States, the Gulf Coast, and more. Last year, we were forecasting for much less snow than normal, and this year, we're actually going to be putting up something a little bit different. We're going to be calling this the severe weather zone. Now, Obviously, we typically end up seeing a Dixie Alley severe weather event once or twice per winter where we see a few strong tornadoes and some big stuff happens, but this year I'm actually expecting that to be even abnormally greater than usual in terms of volume. This year, we are expecting with our La Nina phase for higher temperatures to occur along the Gulf Coast in the southeastern quadrant of the United States. Don't know why I said quadrant like that, but I'm not from New England, I promise. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and fill in that area there as the severe weather zone. It's been a while since we've had a good Dixie Alley severe weather season, but just north of there, we've got that messy green shaded area, and this is what we're going to be calling our mixed precipitation zone. Now, I know nobody likes being in this zone because it's kind of just that wet, slushy stuff whenever we say mixed precipitation. That's what we're referring to. It's that nasty ice slash slush slash mist slash whatever you want to call it, but... 
I do foresee a couple of potential snow events for this region. I just don't see it being too frequent, and I think in general you're going to see a lot more of those nasty slushy snow events in that green shaded area than anything else. So you're going to be in our mixed precipitation zone for right now. So let's go ahead and continue our way up the east coast by forecasting for portions of southern New England as well as much of the mid-Atlantic region. And I'm personally going to be referring to this area as the slightly above average snowfall zone. We'll just call it slightly more snow for the sake of this map and the uh, space that it takes up. But I do expect this winter to not only be above average in terms of precipitation for much of southern New England, but also below average potentially in terms of temperature. Obviously, as we saw last year, uh, multiple of those major snow events moving through much of southern New England and the mid-Atlantic area. Uh, La Nina patterns typically favor cooler conditions up here in the northern tier of the country as well. So it's a very good possibility that we do end up seeing one or two major winter storms roll through this area, but overall nothing too extreme compared to average. Moving over to the Midwest and the upper Midwest as well as the northern plains, we're going to be referring to this as the major Arctic blast zone. I expect this area to experience well, well below average temperatures throughout much of our winter season this year, along with a couple of major winter storms not too uncommon for a weak to moderate La Nina phase across much of the Midwest. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw a couple of record low temperatures potentially get broken, maybe some record snowfall totals as well in a couple of localized areas. Overall, I do expect this to be a pretty significant winter for this region, and if I had to place the area where I think we're most likely to see a major winter storm this year, it would be across the northern plains in the upper Midwest. Now, moving back up to portions of upstate New York as well as western Vermont, as I did unfortunately miss out on that there just a second ago, we're going to be referring to this as the lake effect snow zone. Now, obviously every year you guys say you see some amount of lake effect snow, so I'm sure you want me to be a bit more specific, and to that I say, okay, fair enough. What I mean when I say lake effect snow is far more lake effect snow than usual. Last year, we had a well above average lake effect snow season for much of upstate New York, and I'm expecting something similar again with a similar Enzo phase this year, although I don't expect it to be quite as widespread it was last year, as it was last year, uh, specifically down into portions of northwestern Pennsylvania and northeastern Ohio. I don't think our lake, event, uh, lake effect snow events will be quite as extreme as they will back up into portions of upstate New York this year. So I'm calling this area the lake effect snow zone. Again, I know you guys see lake effect snow every year, but this year I'm expecting it to be far more than usual. Now that brings us down to the desert southwest. We're going to be referring to this area as the very dry zone. Now I know nobody likes to be in this zone. I mean, I guess you might if you're not a snow lover, but unfortunately everything that suggests that we could end up seeing a drier season for the desert southwest is in play this year. That brings us on to much of the Rockies and even some of the Pacific Northwest. Uh, this area we are expecting for this year to see average mountain snow. So what that means is obviously a lot of these areas you don't have too many regions that are, you know, average elevation. Most of these areas are on mountaintops. For the areas that are I'm expecting a relatively average winter for you guys, and I'm expecting that to reflect in our snow totals this year across much of the mountainous regions as well in this area, like the Western Rockies, etc., so, average mountain snow for the Pacific Northwest and portions of the Desert Southwest and even parts of the Four Corner states. And finally, for the actual Pacific Northwest, we're going to be calling this the cooler zone. Now, I don't expect this to impact our snow totals too much because obviously you don't struggle with getting temperatures low enough to get snow in the Pacific Northwest usually. Usually it relates to how dry it is up there that is the lack of snow if there ever is any. And this year I do potentially see that being a factor that comes into play, although it is a little bit too far out to get too specific with above average and below average precipitation zones. So we're just going to call this the cooler zone for now. I was hesitant to put cooler and drier up on there, but we're not going to do that for right now. Right now, we're just going to call that the cooler than normal zone. So there you have it. This is your 2024 through 2025 winter season forecast. If you're watching this back after the winter, make sure to let me know how I did. If you are watching this as the video drops, make sure to set a reminder to come back and see how we did because... If I did just as terrible as last year, or heaven forbid, worse, I want to know. But if we did good, I want to know as well. So make sure to click that subscribe button down below, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.